I didn't want a party city dress. It's darker wet than it is dry, but it actually, it looks kind of purple. Look at the size of these sleeves. The size of my whole table. It's anybody's guess if it'll all get done today. Hey there gorgeous people, my name is Kaylee and welcome or welcome back to my channel where I share my journey towards a more magical life that is cozy, creative, and weird and today we are going to be doing that by sewing my witchy dress of dreams. So I came across this sewing pattern a little while ago and it immediately made me swoon. This is the waterfall sewing pattern from Sycamore Road. At the end of this video I'm going to be sharing a more in-depth breakdown of the stats for this dress. So how long it took me to make it, what materials I used, how much it cost me to make, my final thoughts on the pattern. So make sure you stick around until the end of the video if you are curious about hearing all about that. But for now let's just jump right into to the sewing process of this dress. So originally when I saw this pattern, I wanted to make something similar to what is featured on the pattern website, the mini dress version. I had something almost exactly like this already in my stash, however, I found these magical crescent moon buttons, ordered them right away because I instantly fell in love. However, they looked kind of washed out with the white fabric and I really wanted them to pop. So I did a poll over here and on my Instagram. You guys all agreed that black fabric for the dress would be better. Unfortunately, I don't have black fabric. I do, however, have this light blue linen I just got from Minerva. It comes in a black version. However, they were all sold out at the time, but I also happen to have black dye. It doesn't tell you on the bottle though how you're supposed to do that, so I'm gonna look it up. Okay, it's the moment of truth. I let it die and, hmm. I know it's gonna, it's darker wet than it is dry, but it actually, it looks kind of purple. Like it's not, it's not like black. I don't know. Honestly, let's dry it and see. I, I might not even be mad at it. Let's find out. <laughs> it's tomorrow now. Also, we are just a couple days into October at the time of filming this and I already had my first ghost encounter. What a perfect way to celebrate sewing a witchy dress. So I just finished cycle number two with the second bottle of Rit and I used the, the fixative to help the color stay because when I put this in to soak, the first time a lot of dye came out. So hopefully that helped. It's definitely black now, which is what I wanted. I think I'm gonna wash this again. So I'm gonna run it through, dry it, and then we'll get to cutting out our fabric. So it is currently 6.20 and I got up early hoping I could squeeze in an hour of sewing before the kids wake up. Looking at my pattern instructions, I'm hoping to at least get through to step six. So that would just be attaching the whole collar. If I can start on the sleeves, that would be phenomenal. But I'm just gonna put on some music. I think I'm gonna get the coffee going in just a second and have a little cozy sewing morning.
So now it is the next day. It is a very gloomy, rainy day outside, which suits me just fine. It is the perfect day for sewing a witchy dress. I was able to attach the collar and get that all sewn in, and I pleated and attached one of the sleeves. I still have to sew up the side, and I still have the second sleeve to do. We've got some work to do, so I'm just gonna continue on. So it's been just over an hour of sewing. Um, I have managed to accomplish pleating, attaching the second sleeve, um, finishing off both the seams, and then sewing up the bottom seams of both of those sleeves and finishing those. Let me tell you, these sleeves, they are not messing around. So we're gonna take a quick break. I need to get the kids lunch and I need to put the little one down for a nap do homeschooling with the big one. And then after that, I need to sew the elastic into the sleeves and the waist. And then I need to attach the skirt and then sew the buttons and buttonholes for the placket. So who knows, it's anybody's guess if it'll all get done today. But yeah, we'll take a quick lunch break and then get back to sewing. Hiya. So she is just about done. All that is left is to hem the skirt and of course add the iconic, beautiful, magical moon buttons to the front placket and then it's all done. So I'm gonna go ahead, crack on with that and then we'll do the final reveal. So let's talk final thoughts when it comes to the sewing of this dress. Overall, I'm really happy with it. It's incredibly comfortable. It's super easy to move around in and it also has those autumnal, ooky spooky vibes that I was going for. One thing, I am gonna complain about is the fact that this dress does not have pockets and I am so mad at myself that I didn't think to add them. I don't think we should ever condemn somebody for being a witch or identifying as a witch. I do think we should absolutely condemn people who don't include pockets in their dresses. <laughs> Let's get into the overall stats of this dress and the materials that I used. As for the total time that it took me to sew this dress, I think it took me about eight hours total. That includes printing off the pattern, assembling all the pattern pieces, cutting out my fabric and prepping it, 
yada yada yada. For the materials I used, I used three and a half yards of lightweight linen that was kindly gifted to me from Minerva as one of their brand ambassadors. Altogether, I used two bottles of Rit dye and one bottle of the fixative to set the color. Let's get to these buttons. They are amazing. Shop Alley Mercery has such a good selection. I'm probably gonna order them again. They are so, so cute. That again is the waterfall top and dress from Sycamore Road Patterns. I made this in the size E based on my measurements and I made it in view B. I made no alterations to this pattern aside from adding pockets, which I will do later on. I also used a about one and a half yards of three eighths inch elastic. All of the supplies that I am mentioning here will be linked for you in the description box below. I think it's important for sewists, for makers, that we also talk about cost of labor. That's something that's often overlooked or neglected when it comes to making our own wardrobe. Had I paid myself the current market rate for someone living in my area, that would have been about $24 an hour, which would bring the total cost of my labor to about $192.56 for this dress. Making the grand total of this dress, let me check my notes again, $330 and 73 cents. That doesn't include tax, by the way. <laughs> if you've made it this far into the video and you're still watching, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me and sewing with me today. And if you're still around, put something fun in the comments, like a witch or something. I, that could just be like a fun little inside joke in the comments for us. If you enjoyed sewing along with me today, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I post cozy, crafty, witchy content every other Friday. And if you'd like to see even more from me, consider subscribing to my Patreon channel. Over there, I share a whole bunch of other stuff like book clubs, live stream workshops where we can craft together, and also little sneak peeks for projects that are to come. So if that all sounds good to you, the link to my Patreon will be in the description box below. Thank you so much to my lovely patrons. I love you and appreciate you so much for watching, my sweet friends. And until next time, I hope that you are staying cozy. I hope that you're staying creative, and most importantly, I hope you're keeping it weird. Bye, guys.